Hi everyone, it's Ross again, um, bringing you some more terrain builds. Uh, this time around I am building and unboxing the Time Worn Ruins. So previously I have painted the non ruined version of this, so the temples with the pillars that are still standing, and this statue in the middle, and the little fiery pits. Uh, lovely terrain. I didn't do a unboxing video for it uh, because it was already unboxed and you may have seen the how to painting on my Instagram page um, but I didn't actually do a video on how to paint it. So this time around I am going to. So I'm going to do an unboxing of the ruins and I'm actually going to paint it. So. When I was painting it previously, the non-ruined version, I was using some Humbro paints that were about 20 years old, but still sealed and perfect. Now I haven't got the same colour anymore, sadly, but I've got some OGW paints like this, uh, I think they used to say Vomit Brown, that are pretty darn close. Um, so I'm going to paint it up. Not that it matters to you guys, but I would like to have our club terrain all looking pretty much the same. So for the time-worn ruins and the, the temples that are still intact, I want them all pretty much the same colour. It just looks nicer on the table. So if we do any AOS battle reports in future, and please put in the comments section below if you would like that. We mainly do 40k battle reports at the moment. But AOS is quite popular at our local club, and I think it's uh, going to bring back some love for me, because I do have an AOS army, and I know House of Chaos John has, and House of Chaos Carl probably has a couple, <laughs> knowing him. Um, so we might get some painted, and do some battle reports, and we've got some friends, like I said, in our local club, that would uh, probably like to be on camera, and do about a few battle reports kicking our butts, so why not? Shame us, you know, have us on a video getting absolutely slammed. So that's why I want to paint it pretty much the same colour, but you can paint it any colour you want. I just like the, I don't normally go for fun on box art, I do like a bit, a bit of a twist to it, but the box art is amazing. Try to get rid of that shine in a minute. I do like the whole sandy look. Now I have seen it, a bit of a turquoise look. Hell, I've even seen some people use a bit of this stuff all over it. Now I have used this for my war cry terrain. That has been on our YouTube channel, so check it out. I quite like using that stuff. Um, bit of a interesting twist. So this is a how to assemble. Not too complicated. This is probably the most complicated thing in the box, which still isn't massively complicated. And it's quite high detailed, even though it is ruined. That's it. Wow, that is literally it. I suppose there's not much to assemble. All these pieces are as whole. So I will show off the stuff on the sprue at the moment. So you can see a nice little pile of skulls next to that massive head there. Corn's going to love a bit of that. Now I have also done a how to paint the skull altar, the altar for corn. Previously, uh, you can tell that talking about skulls is a bit of interest there. That's the army I play. Right. Okay. So yeah, there isn't much to assemble. Just this guy mainly. So I'll cut it all off the sprue, assemble it, glue it together, and start hitting it with some paint. So most of my painting videos for terrain uh, are pretty short. I try to aim for about an hour. I try to, obviously minus the assembly, once it's all assembled, I try to get to a tabletop standard. So not boring you guys, just rip them out. Some videos like uh, once these are assembled, for example, do a base color, do a highlight, do an edge highlight, maybe even a dry brush. And I do like things with flames doing a bit of object source lighting, especially with the airbrush. I think it's quite punchy, looks good from a distance. Um, so I won't go massively into detail, and I love making sci-fi terrain. So when I do that, there's a lot of water, like rusty effects. Uh, things are beaten, smashed about. And I've done quite a few like how-to sci-fi stuff with household products. 
so you know the kind of stuff I like and that's how I'm going to paint this stuff up so a little bit beaten, a little bit chipped and hopefully knocking all this set out in an hour it shouldn't take you too long to paint it all up especially with an airbrush right, I'll get assembling and come back when they're all actually one piece see you in a minute, as if by magic Okay, so now all the components are assembled, so most of it didn't need assembling. Uh, it was, this came in two halves, which is pretty straightforward. Uh, two main halves and the fire piece, which just stuck on top. So both of those are the same. So pretty straightforward. And this one here came in several little pieces. Um, so a couple of bits of the tabard there. Um, the sphere in hand, a couple of little chest pieces and the axe, and the halo. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. I mean, the base stuck on the bottom, that came in two halves. Um, but yeah, the rest of it was really, really easy. There's quite a lot of pieces in this kit, which is fantastic. Uh, yeah, really high detail. I like the uh, inscriptions there. And the skulls and the bones and stuff on the base. So I got rid of all the mold lines. The only thing maybe I could put green stuff on uh, is the the lines here, uh, two halves, main two halves of the body joined together, which I'll do that with liquid green stuff. Um, so that need liquid green stuff. So with these, and I think these would probably be okay. So what I've used glue wise is plastic glue, because uh, I find that's great at molding two halves of anything together. That's plastic base. Uh, plastic glue, obviously, don't use it on metal glue. Um, metal glue, metal models, because it won't do anything. Funny enough, the clue's in the title. Right, so I'll get on with green stuffing that, and while that's drying, I will crack on painting some of this stuff. Okay, so putting a little bit of liquid green stuff on the mold lines or the pieces that are glued together. Anything that looks like um, it's fairly obvious it shouldn't be there. So any lines around the pillar that look a bit too perfect for a broken pillar. It's fairly obvious. Okay, so I'm going to start airbrushing the stuff. Now you can seal it with a rattle can. It's not a problem. Um, so a cheap rattle can from a pound store or something like that, which I've done on the other pieces. While I'm waiting for the green stuff to dry, I will add some paint to the bowl of my airbrush. Right. Okay, and it's always important to test on something before you're airbrushing if you've got the right consistency. So I feel pretty happy with that. I'll take this piece here, make sure there's no mold lines. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Right, I'm going to start spraying it. Usual rules apply with airbrushing. Try to get in all the recesses first before you do any of the major stuff. So get in all the little nooks and crannies. And you can always wear gloves as well. Put a couple of thin layers down on these pieces, and that's basically the colour I'm aiming for. Uh, when it goes off nice and dry, I'm going to put a second layer on, and then followed by a wash to pick out all the recesses. So I'm going to do the same, exactly the same with every single piece. I'm going to go from there. Rinse and repeat with every single piece. Okay, so once all the pieces are sprayed fairly evenly, then you want to hit it with a little bit lighter. You don't have to, but I like to, because the good old airbrush does a pretty cool effect. I'm just going to do it 
slightly lighter in the centre of each part. Just like that. So it makes it look like it's slightly glowy. Just like that. So you don't have to do this. I like doing that. Uh, just because it makes it look a bit eye-catching and funky. I'll just do it in the centre of each major piece. Just like so. Doesn't have to be too, too neat. Just like that. I will do that on all of these pieces. And then once dry, I'll start with the pin washing. So the pin washing is like these runes. Start picking them out with some wash. Okay, what's next on the shed ton of terrain? Like I said, I will be cracking out some pin washes on runes. So I'm going to go with the good old trusty Agrax Afshade, the old faithful, and pick out all the little details. This could take some time. There's a lot of terrain. Like a lot of terrain. This is when the camera cuts. And six hours later, so it doesn't have to be mega mega neat. So I'm going to wipe off the excess in a second. You get the idea. Something like that. Another side. 10,000 pieces to go. Not quite as bad as that. You know what I mean. Right. I will see you next week when this is all dry. Okay, um, now all the runes are done. It did take a while, but totally worth it. Um, so it's got a bit more definition now, so anything dirty, pieces of train really are standing out. And the previously lighter areas that I airbrushed are popping a little bit more. So it's looking a bit grubby, it's looking quite nice. Now I'm going to have to start picking out some of the skulls. So with the skulls, I'm just going to hit them all white, just basic white, and then when it's dry, Maybe a bit of sepia, make it yellow and a bit dirty. So I'm not spending too much time on the skulls, they're not the main feature. So I could spend a while blending it, but I just want them to stand out just a little bit. I want to make them look dirty, especially the skulls like on pieces like this. And the skulls have probably been sat up in there for a while. A bit dirty, a bit grimy. And also, a little bit of the old tin bits. I'm going to put on the like, metal banding and things like that. I'm going to do that first before I do the object source lighting on the fire. Because I want that light to shine on the metal banding itself. So I'm going to get a bit of that on my brush. Start coating these guys. Inside and outside. 
not covering massively well. So as predicted, I will need two coats of this. Just getting on the inside. Doing the difficult bits first. The easy bits of a follow. Okay, I'll finish these off. Once dry, I'll start attacking the skulls. Okay, so uh, I've done all the bronzy, brassy pieces without making them weathered yet anyway. Just like that. So on these two, I'm going to have to use the good old airbrush for the flame effects, I think. Because I want a bit of object source lighting catching the, the metal framework around. Uh, there was a little bit of detail on this guy. All the bronzy bits. So I think I'm going to have a nice like royal blue in the recesses around these pieces. Um, and yeah, I think I'll have a little bit of the uh, the old oxide running out of any bolts, nuts, rivets, cracks. So oxide, this stuff from GW is uh, it's pretty cool. I like it. Um, I'll use a bit now just to show you. So put a bit of water in my brush. Give the old pot a shake. Always shake your paints. And this is a brand new pot. You lucky people. So you notice this stuff is very, very thin. Um, it's thinner than a shade or a wash. It seems to react in a slightly different way. Uh, so what I'll do is, I'll put a little bit in the socket here, a bit there. And you can just use your finger to make it run. Or you can just leave it in some recesses. Just gonna put a little bit there, make it run down a little bit, wipe off the excess. You could even water it down a little bit more, which I'll do now just to show you. And then you could put it over the whole of the thing to make it look a bit aged. Just like so. Just put a little bit. Yeah, so just running down. Just in a few little places. Sponge it a little bit with your finger, or actually use a sponge. Yeah, it's brilliant stuff. Love it. Works really well with nuts and bolts and rivets. On flat pieces, eh, not so much, but you get the idea. Water a bit. Just a few little cracks down here, recesses, like the Fleur de Lis kind of pieces. Just like that. So I'll be doing that on a few of the cogs on here as well. Just getting into the little recesses. Just use my finger, mop up some excess. Like so. Bit of water, transfer a bit over here and there. So different consistencies. Like so. So 
So I do like putting these on little studs and things like that and then run down. So if these are bronze, it'd be ideal just to do a few little tears off tears off even. Don't know what the language of that was. So just a little bit here. Like that, a little bit in there as well. Yeah, just like that. Same with the big guy. Let me run down a little bit there. Just a little hint every now and then. Nothing too mental. Like a little bit there, for example. Yeah, just take a little nod. Here and there. Just the weathering. Right. That is done for that. Now the 100 billion skulls that I keep trying to put off. So I do love my old school GW paint, and I do like cracking out some bo um, bottles from an old paint box. And there's nothing finer than the good old <laughs> days of the old hexagon paint pots, the old old ones. So I've got some polished blue because nothing says royalty like glam blue. Give it a damn good shake because this is an old pot of paint. And this is what I'm talking about. Bow chicka wow wow. That is nice. So a metallic -y, royal looking blue. Who doesn't love a bit of that? So this is what I want in here. Now when it's dry I might put a shade on this. Pick out some of the rivets and stuff underneath the blue. Maybe a bit of no oil around the rivet or something. But how nice is that colour? That is mega bling. This statue is loving life. Look at that. Yeah, this is you know, a colour you can use as um, a bit of a spot colour. Draw the eye a bit, so you can have some like royal blue or some nice reds or turquoises or something. I'm not just using this up because it needs to be used up. I actually had this in mind. So it looks like a bit of a, a royal colour. Like a Fabergé egg or something. So yeah, I thought that was a bit glit, glam. So this is on the Buster statue piece, the main statue piece, and the hammer, which was. I guess part of this piece at one stage before it got destroyed. Obviously by the forces of chaos. So who else would destroy it, eh? Youths. That's who. Chavs. Chavs and youths of the Age of Sigmar. That's who it is. Asbos. Age of Sigmar Asbos. Going around destroying statues. Alright, so I will finish this fella off and the main statue itself.
Okay, so the first thing's first. In the, the fire, there are some coals. So what I'm going to do is add a little bit of my dirty palette. Red and black. So very, very basic coals. You won't see half of these anyway because the uh, object source lighting from the actual fire itself will cover most of this up. But I do want some coals. So the base of the coals is going to be very dark red. And then I am going to pick up some bright sections of it in a bit. Base of the fire is a very dark red. So just get in there, run the bomb bit. Using a bit of airbrush paint because it's a bit thin. Do them on both. So we're using airbrush paint because it's going to sit in all the recesses. It'll be lighter on the top. So in a minute when I use oranges and stuff to pick out the, the glowing coals, I can put it pick it out individually with a brush on the raised areas that this paint didn't get into making it look a bit brighter so there we go that's that while that dries I'm gonna mix up some light orange and there's the good old airbrush kicking off in the background uh, what I like to do next is get a little bit of orange so quite a nice bright orange just start picking up the center of these coals so the bits that the uh, airbrush paint didn't touch, the higher spots should be brighter. Don't worry about too much getting it on the, on the brass banding of the fire pit there. Because in a minute the fire will touch a bit of that. And you wipe a bit of excess off with your thumb if you need to. Okay, and keep doing that, and get a nice bright orange on the coals. And while the orange coals are drying, pick up the raised areas with a bit of white on the flame itself, so we make that nice and bright in a minute. Those flames are really pop. So just the raised areas. So the fire doesn't look too flat. And it looks really bright. Once again, using that orange just to brighten up the coals a little bit, just on the highest bits. Yeah, those coals really glow. And they look like they're glowing more because there's a darker colour all around them. Okay, 
once you're happy with the brightness of your coal, you start on the fire itself. For that I'm using an airbrush, but you can still use a regular brush and blend in the flames themselves. For this I just like using an airbrush. If you have one, brilliant. If you don't, that's fine. Same methods apply really, and same colours. So the colours you get in fire, obviously oranges and yellows, those kind of colours. So that's what you want to break out. Okay, so for fire, I like to start off with a yellow at the base, then work my way up to oranges. And then finally, maybe a little bit of red at the tip. So I'll probably go a little bit of this, I'm getting darker and going to pretty much black at the top, purely because that's where I imagine the smoke's gonna be. So I'll start with the yellow. Yeah, it's looking pretty good in the airbrush. So I'm gonna start off with yellow. I'm going to do this about three quarters of the way up. And what I'm going to do is each stage, I'm going to be blending the next color, the next part above it into it. So for this, yellow first, about three quarters. And then when it comes to the orange, I'm then going to be hitting that last little bit of the yellow, overlapping with the orange. It's nice and gentle to start with. Like I said, you'll get a bit of the banding, brass banding, the metal covered as well, but that's, that's the beauty of it. Okay, wait for that to dry. Probably hit the yellow again because yellow isn't the best for coverage. Okay, so that's the second layer of yellow there. I'm going to start from the top down with a bit of orange. Blend it in a little bit. Like that. I'll move that away so I don't get it covered in paint. Once this is dry, I'll do the highest section with the orange again. And already you can see that it's starting to make a quite a cool effect. So we're glowing around the edges there on the basket. And the fire is starting to look a little bit more realistic now. So I will just do the top part with a more solid orange. Next, I'm going to add a tiny bit of red to that orange to blend it a little bit as well. Get a little bit of water. And 
I'm just getting higher and higher on the top every time. So just literally just touching the top of it that time. A little bit of the red. The highest tip there. There we go. Once that's dry, maybe a little bit of a dry brush with black. But no, it's looking quite good already. Quite effective from a distance. Nice blends, and you can still see the coals are glowing underneath there. So my rough and ready guide on how to do skulls. So skulls that have been out in the wilderness for a while or abandoned for a while, not been polished, you know, not freshly ripped out of a victim. What I tend to do is get some regular old white and cover the skull leaving out anything like the socket or like the gap for the nose brush gently over the top trying to get as much detail as possible I know what you're thinking you said dirty skulls why are these going to look so clean? Well, what I'll do is use a bit of sepia wash to go over it to make them look a bit yellowy. And if there's any detail I want to pick out afterwards, I'll use a little bit of bleach bone for the highlight areas. But that's basically what I'm doing. Pick out skulls like this. It's a nice bit of detail like that. Bit of a bit of mist uh, like so. Uh, there's a good old skull there. So all the race sections. Try to put this stuff on too thick because you don't want to delete any of the detail. So a bit of detail on these skulls. Some nice cracks. You can see all the individual teeth. Teeth? Teeth. Oh my god. Turn into an orc there for a second. Just like so. And that is a piece with only three skulls. And there's a lot more skulls on the rest of it. There's only one skull here, that's alright, okay. There's a couple of these ruined sections of this kit. There's a lovely kit by the way. That have probably about 50 skulls on it or something crazy. But it's nice, it's just not like the old school 90s GW terrain. When you just got a skull, you've actually got the jaw hung open as well there. I always do wonder what happened to the, the jewels of all those skulls. But no. It's not too detailed a brush. In fact, this is quite an old brush for me. A bit busted, but nice and gentle. Less is more. Also, I keep telling people. Just like so. Any more for any more? No, just two skulls in that one, ideal. Single final piece of loads and loads of skulls. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at all the skulls. Oh, nicely cracked skull there. Alright, so I want to keep the crack in. Yep, there's a joke there somewhere. I'll leave it well alone. And I'll just paint around it. Like so. And 
nice femur bone or something there as well. Alright, I'll paint all these skulls and come back when I'm done. So now all the billions of skulls are painted, you'll notice they're really bright white. So I've gone for a little bit of the old sepia, just to tone it down a little bit. Now you can water this down if you want a little bit, but I'm just going to put it on quite thickly. And you'll notice this is not too dissimilar from the colour of the rest of the model. Don't worry, once it's all dry, I'm going to dry brush it as well. Pick up any details at the edges of the stonework and skulls and things like that. So, there's a lot of skulls to pick out if you haven't maybe heard me mention it once or twice. Make sure you don't forget any. Oh look, another load of skulls on the other side. There's a surprise. Hold it slightly differently. And now you can see why I wasn't going to spend ages on each individual skull, blending them from like a bleachy, bony colour up to a nice light colour because there's just so many flipping skulls so. right there's one I'll come back after I do all the others okay so just a little final little wisp of a bad and black so get just a little smackering on your brush and this is just for the top tip of this of the flame. So just like the smoky bit. So I'm just going to blow, brush off the excess on my finger. Just get a little bit there, a little bit there. So just a just a hint. So given the illusion. A bit of a smitchy fire. Smitchy fire? Is that really a word? Smitchy? It is now. Just invented a word. So just a little bit there and there. Making it a little bit more realistic. So you can see it glowing away nicely in there. And same on the other one. Just a little bit there. Add as much as you like. Depends how smoky your fire is. Just like so. Okay. So. Waiting for all the washes and everything to dry. And then I am going to dry brush the whole thing. Quite a, a wide makeup brush, actually. So something probably along the lines of this kind of size, picking up all the raised areas. Right. I'll show you in a second once they're dry. And now for the final stage. So what I've got is quite a wide brush, and I've brushed off the excess white I'm using, but you can use whatever colour you would like, just to give. The final edge highlights. Just picking up any harsh edges like that on the busted rocks there. Same on the other side. On the edges of 
this pillar here. Like so. And it doesn't seem like a lot. But it just gives it a bit of a bit of an edge to it. Like so. Be as heavy handed as you wish. I'm not going too mental with it. Like so, do on every single piece. I find when you're doing so many pieces similar, you've got to have some kind of routine to it. As there is a lot of pieces of train in this kit. If you do it all in one hit, then they should look very similar, which is what you want. Because it's supposed to be part of the same set, remember? And you get through it a lot quicker. It's like batch painting if you're painting squads, very much the same. Paint all one colour, then the following colour, then the following colour, rather than keep picking up the same pots of paint over and over again. Okay, so I've finished all the bits off. Come back and talk about the final pieces. So here you have the final pieces for the time-worn runes. So I've painted them up so that it looks fairly similar to the artwork and to match the previous temples I have made for AOS. So those are all the Stormcast temples. I have done a little bit of uh, the corn uh, terrain, which is painted totally different and typical corn colours. But now we're hoping to see these on some House of Chaos battle reports soon. So at the moment we've done a lot of 40k battle reports and hopefully we're getting some AOS on the go soon. But no this is lovely. I mean there's 14 pieces here. It's quite well detailed. I didn't want to be too garish with the colours. Just a little hint here and there. Uh, like these little flaming pits. Just a bit of fun, pretty quick. So most of my terrain I like to paint up in about an hour. And this stuff is brilliant. I mean, there's a lot of um, textures, 
you can just run the dry brush over it's fantastic it's a nice and quick uh, but they do look amazing as well and I mean and they're not centerpieces for your table and uh, they're not really going to give you much cover of things like that they're kind of pieces you would add to another terrain piece or just a corner of a board as a bit of rough terrain um, but I know they're not massively focal pieces I mean this one is obviously he's pretty cool but it does look great nonetheless GW you've done a brilliant job with this terrain it looks great it really does thank you very much for watching guys please hit the like button and if this is your cup of tea please subscribe catch you next time